Uh, appreciate you taking the time today to join in uh, for those of you that are here today and for those that are watching this at a later date. I hope you get some good insights on what we're seeing as a company, uh, specifically in the B2B landscape. So today's topic, major software categories are colliding. Uh, this will be a brief presentation, hopefully keep it down to about 30 minutes, describing different ways to navigate the increasing complex world of the ERPs, CRM, e-commerce, and ultimately SIM, which is a product that we developed and how those come together to better run your business, drive sales and growth, and ultimately make you more efficient as an organization. So next slide here. This is uh, essentially giving you an idea of what we're gonna go about today uh, in the conversation. So major categories of software that help companies get, keep, and grow customers, they're all starting to collide. So you have ERP, you have CRM, you have e-commerce, you have help de desk ticket and support. All of these different applications are really starting to collide and are needing to leverage the same type of data. So we've seen that over and over again uh, the past few years. As we begin to get more feedback from our customers, we're definitely seeing this as a common theme and we decided to do something about it. So today I wanna to give you a quick recap of what we're seeing and how we can ultimately help you navigate these waters and, and ultimately grow your business and better compete in your industry. So the, the agenda for today Obviously, we're going over the agenda now. I'm gonna give you a little bit about me, just so you know who's speaking to you today. I'm going to give you a brief, scary story, uh, give you steps to change the story ending to ultimately better drive your business growth and make you more efficient, find solutions, and ultimately try and make decisions on software applications out there that ultimately help you strive in that direction. Then we're gonna go over a quick new story, what these solutions can do and what we're seeing in the marketplace. And then if we have time, we'll certainly go over any questions that you may have. So a little bit about me. Uh, again, my name is Pat Shears. I am from Greenville, South Carolina, which is where I'm currently located. I went to Clemson University. Go Tigers. Uh, definitely wish I was still there. Those were uh, four good years of my life. I graduated in 2010, so I'm not going to give you my age, but anyone out there that can do the math, um, I pretty much followed the standard timeline of high school and college, so take a stab at it. Uh, I studied business, marketing, and management is the background um, for me and my professional history, just to give you some insight, I started out in corporate finance right out of college, did that for a couple years, didn't see that as a fit for me, didn't really uh, scratch the itch that I had professionally, so I decided to get into real estate, did that for a couple years, still have a license, do that on the side a little bit, but then decided to take over a restaurant, so I have kind of a unique background, more so than what uh, SimCloud typically hires, but uh, that can be a good or a bad thing. <laughs> so did the restaurant for a couple years. I started a lifestyle retail brand that's centered around paddle sports. It's one of my big passions here. Uh, I live close to a lake, so I do a lot of paddling. Uh, and then I found the tech and software space. And ultimately, I've been here for two years, simplified by website pipeline. And I've really started to enjoy the, the industry, the space, and, and what we can do to help solve problems. So this is, I think, my forever home, at least in the software space. Never know with SimCloud. So the story, uh, just a quick background on what we're gonna go into today. So there's different, different groups within your organization that all have different priorities and different visions. So the CEO typically saying, you know, we want to grow the business, we want to grow revenue, and we want to be more successful, and we want to better compete in the industry. You then have a marketing team uh, that simply says, hey, let's try and insert the new coolest cloud thing out there. What's shiny, what can we use? What's gonna help us leverage our marketing assets and our marketing knowledge? to better drive business. And then here's a quick chart, just to kind of blow you back a little bit to see how complex uh, the marketing technology landscape is. So there's all types of different solutions, different market segments, different customer segments, profiles, a lot of different tools out there that claim to help you work more efficiently, but this is just to paint the picture of how complex that world really can be. Um, another example of that here, you then have the biz ops and IT side of business. And what they're trying to do is say, hey, how are we actually going to work with our existing stuff? How can we leverage that, be more efficient, and ultimately drive better ROI from what we've already spent and invested as a company? Then you have the technology peddler. So these are, again, all different um, teams within your organization. And you have the technology peddler, is what we call them, saying, hey, look how shiny this is. I think we should implement this. So we have different strategies all over the place within a single organization that typically can disrupt the business and make it very difficult to ultimately be more efficient and better compete in your industry. So where's the happy ending to this story when you have so many different types of team members and different softwares that they're trying to utilize, different applications, different platforms? Well, we wanted to try and find it. So the steps to changing the ending of this story, which is constantly and repeatedly based on what we've seen with our customers, it's always different and it's always painful. 
So the first thing that we always recommend to upper level management, um, executive leaders within organizations, when we're talking to them about basically making their business more efficient, is you need to understand the big picture. So as upper level management, C-level executives, ownership, you need to be sure to take a step back, look at the forest as a whole, and don't focus solely on certain areas within that forest. It's kind of the analogy we use. Step two is you want to be able to identify where your pains are and how you can simply implement different software solutions to get ROI and create a solution that's gonna make your business run more efficiently. Uh, step three, you find those solutions, so you go out, you vet different solutions, you're, the, you're then in the feasibility stage and trying to qualify different opportunities and solutions out there. Step four, you wanna make a decision, and you definitely wanna keep the five question test at mind when you are making a decision, which I will go over that here in just a little bit. So step one, understanding the big picture. Uh, just some quick insights. I'm a big fan of educational material. I'm a big fan of knowledge is power. So I always try to get as much information as I can within the industry, what's happening, what people have tried, what's failed, what's succeeded. If you guys haven't read the book, uh, Mastering the Rockefeller Habits, I highly recommend it. But basically the first step, understanding big picture, you wanna first understand what's going on, your core values, the purpose and why you even exist, the vision, where we're going and where we're currently pointed, you want to establish and outline different targets three to five years out. You want to have short-term and long-term goals, uh, one year, three year, five year, seven year, 10 year plans, which is pretty common within the industry and, and within different business organizations. Areas of responsibility, that is something I touched on previously with the different teams. You want to make sure they're aligned, that they're all um, have the same concept and big picture in mind. So it's very much a team environment and those are typically the organizations that succeed and, and outperform their competition. So then you want to identify different projects. So you want to start to shrink those timelines down and say, okay, what can we work on 30 to 90 days out? What is that timeline? What does it look like? And when are we going to be able to implement that solution and, and say, hey, we've executed and it's now going live and we are seeing a return as we monitor um, and evaluate the solution. Then you have different actions daily and weekly. So again, you, you start to shrink down that timeline of different activities you need to identify as an organization and ultimately try to drive more success within the organization and better alignments uh, within your team. So a couple different things that are on this slide. There are high level 10 different um, checklists or habits that are outlined within this book. And I'm just going to read off the top three here because I'm a big fan of these and we've actually implemented some of these uh, internally here within our organization. So number one, definitely take this down. The executive team is healthy and aligned. You want to make sure that your team members understand each other's differences, their priorities and their styles. You want to make sure that the team is meeting frequently. Weekly is usually best for strategic thinking. And you want to make sure that the topic of digital transformation, which is what we're seeing uh, within the industry itself, is a, it is a common topic within those meetings. You want to make sure that the team participates in ongoing execution uh, and executive education daily. Monthly is recommended, uh, but we, we tend to do that daily or weekly. And the team is able to engage in constructive debates, and all members feel comfortable participating. So that's definitely a high-level takeaway from uh, this book, again, I highly recommend it. Number two, everyone is aligned. This is a big, big piece that we try to harp on here daily. So you wanna make sure that just, not within the executive team, but everyone underneath, you wanna make sure everyone is aligned. And the number one thing that needs to be accomplished this quarter to move the company forward. Make sure that that is a common theme. It's constantly communicated. You wanna identify three to five top priorities. They call them rocks in this book that support the critical number and identify and rank for each quarter of what you wanna to try to accomplish. Um, the number three takeaway here, and then I'll, I'll move on from this slide, communication rhythm is established and you want to make sure information moves through the organization accurately and quickly. So all employees, which we do this here daily as well, are in a daily huddle that lasts less than 15 minutes. We call them stand-up meetings because when you're standing up, ultimately, you won't be able to sit there as long. So we try to stand up and have a meeting every morning for about 15 minutes. We go around, we identify key uh, areas that we need to focus on, any issues that we're having, any help that we need or may uh, uh, need to try to go outside of our internal team to find those solutions. So definitely keep those in mind. I think those are some good takeaways and again, can help you better align your organization internally. So understanding the business drivers. This diagram here is depicting how most product-centric B2B companies operate. So in the middle here, you have different business activities. Ultimately, they wrap up into selling, fulfilling, you're making or buying goods, and you want to make sure you're keeping good records. So that's the foundation or the pillars of your organization. And then outside of that, you have some subcomponents here. So you got vendors and supply and chain, where you get your products from. You have possibly investors. 
you have employees and contractors that you're using to execute either different services or goods or, or solutions that you're providing to your customers. And then you have your customers and channels. And the goal here is to get, keep and grow those customers and channels. And that's what we're focusing on heavily here with SimCloud and customer interaction management. So our focus today is solely on the customer and channel segment of your business. And again, we develop tools that help you get, keep and grow your customer base. And we want you to do all of those activities better, faster and cheaper. So the purpose of interaction management, ultimately we wanna get your target customers from the bottom rung of this ladder to the top. We want you to become a monopoly. We want you to be shut down by the government ultimately because you are in fact a monopoly. You've, you've taken over the entire market. Um, and obviously that would be good, but that's what we strive for as, as when it comes to internal efficiency. So you have a customer that you identify or they identify you, you know each other. They then begin to understand what product or service you're providing. They then may make a transaction with you for the first time. Then all of a sudden they're consistent, but they're, you are not the preferred vendor of that type of item or product they're purchasing. Then we get them up to the next rung here, which is you have become the preferred vendor of that item, but they are still shopping elsewhere as, as well. And ultimately to the top, if we can do this, we have essentially made you much more efficient. You are now streamlined and you are taking over the market and you are beating all of your competition. So now they are the exclusive or you are the exclusive supplier of that product for good. And we try to tap into our customer interaction management software to help that happen. So step two, you need to scope your needs and identify your priorities. So how do you find your pain? We have a very consultative sales process here internally, and we found that it's always been much more efficient than slinging products. So we want to help you identify your customer segments. We want to help you understand the buyer seller gradient and how that relates and how different customers are buying from you. So you have maybe some mom and pop type uh, retail stores. You may have big box stores and there's a gradient and a progression between those two that you can have customers all over that map. So we want to identify that and understand how your customers are purchasing and transacting with you as a business. We also want to help you understand the eight major customer activity areas and where pain points exist in those areas, which I'll outline here in just a second. Uh, then we ultimately want to identify a phase one priority or scope and basically solve your pain and ultimately driving return on investment, which is the ultimate goal when any company purchases software, there has to be an ROI. So when you're identifying your customer segments, there's a couple questions you want to ask yourself. What are your existing and future segments and what do they look like? Which ones do you want to focus on? And then what does each segment do with your product? So there's all types of different customer segments, which I touched on briefly in the previous slide, but you have some consumers, you have professional practices, clubs and organizations, you got mom and pops, you got big box stores, you got dot com. So this is really outlining the different gradient of customer types within your organization. And you want to make sure that you are identifying the top segments that you want to deal with and focus on them in phase one and ultimately go downstream from there to, to continue to be more efficient and better competitive in your industry. So as you're identifying your customer segments, what are they ultimately doing with your products? Are they buying and consuming them? Are they buying and reselling these in a whole? Do they buy and resell as a part of something they produce? And what sophistication level are they on? Part of that gradient we were talking about. And then you got different action self-assessment surveys to basically benchmark yourself and say, hey, what are your customer segments now? Which ones do you want to grow? And what different software applications can we utilize to do that? So here are the different uh, eight major customer activity areas. And we basically went through and did a bunch of research to try to identify these different customer activity areas. Because ultimately we wanted to build out a product that touched on each of these areas and made you more efficient as an organization. So to get, keep and grow each customer segment, which of these activities are pain points and area of weakness for you? And when customers come to us, they're all over the place. We have some that are really good at a couple of these and a couple of them, they're, they're, they execute very poorly. And then we have some that are decent at some of them, decent at all of them, some that are very good, but lack in maybe lead generation. So we basically want to take these different activity areas lead generation, you got lead capture, you want to convert those leads to customers, you want to broadcast your product info to better market what your product is and how it can satisfy their needs as a customer. You have order management, quote generations, order collections, you got payment collections ultimately. So everything from a quote to cash standpoint, we want to be able to streamline and give you tools internally that can leverage your data and the ERP to drive these activities and ultimately try to prevent as much human interaction as possible and help streamline and automate a lot of this process. So then you wanna build a list of requirements from your pain points. So as you identify these pain points and your customer segments,
for each of these eight activity areas, how well are you doing now? And how important is it to you for you to improve those specific activity areas? So just as, as an example, order entry goals. So you want to provide a better level of service for customers to accurately place orders, not just during business hours, which is the traditional method in the B2B arena, but you want to allow them to do it 24 seven. You also want to automate 50% of your order collection and data entry currently being done by reps. And this is what we harp on day in and day out as we go through the value proposition of our solution. So our goal is to leverage and better utilize your existing staff and get better yield per full-time employee as you grow your revenue, but we don't want your employee headcount and revenue to grow at the same rate. If we can keep your full-time employee headcount and payroll down and ultimately drive more web revenue to your business, that increases the bottom line and that's where the ROI typically is coming from. So example customer needs to accomplish your goal. You got a mail kiosk guy buying and selling, self-service portal with his products, the pricing will work. So you wanna give him an option to self-serve his account and not have to contact the customer service rep uh, during business hours, <clears throat> excuse me. You may have a franchise shop, you may have big box retail customers as well. So there's a lot of different customer segments. Again, you want to identify these segments and really outline what these profiles look like and how you can better interact with them through different software applications. And you don't want to do it in a way where you're dividing and trying to conquer different solutions with different applications out there. Because the more type of solutions that you try to implement as an organization, the more work it is internally to manage all of that data and keep everything consistent. So that is where SimCloud essentially came about. I keep throwing these snippets in there of, of our products, so I apologize. <laughs> But identify phase one priority. So here's another goal. Uh, you wanna be sure when you're prioritizing your customer segments, you build a list of requirements and things you need to be able to do. So you want them to climb, climb that ladder of customer engagement we touched on earlier. You wanna make sure that you're moving the gradient from human or manual interactions to machine automated. And the reason we're doing that is, it's, again, we'll harp on this throughout the entire presentation, is we wanna help you get, keep, and grow your customer base and do every activity possible that goes into getting, keeping, and growing those customers we want to do those better, faster, and cheaper. So then you go through and you've developed or identified these phase one priorities and you want to rank your list of requirements by priority. And just a simple example here, an ABC type grade scale, must get done, should get done, nice to do, if easy, kind of a nice to have. So you want to grade these and make sure that you have these requirements as you're going out and identifying different software solutions out there, ultimately trying to make a decision on which one's best for your organization. And then you have by urgency. So urgency is always big, in the business space, obviously, time is money. So then you need to identify, do we need something now, or is this a long-term play because we can't afford to do it now, or it's too much business disruption, and things like that. Step three, you wanna find these solutions. So after you have identified your customer segments, you've identified your pain points, and all these different activity areas, you wanna make sure that you're able to go out and accurately and successfully find different solutions that can help you be more efficient in the interactions you have with customers. So a good way to do this is a Sage partner, since this is specific to Sage and Bass itself, it's great to utilize them and say, hey, what solutions are out there that can help me do this? And then also you wanna to try to attend as many software conferences as possible. So that's a great way to get out there and learn different techniques, different solutions, and what people are building out and developing. You can also get insight on what's worked in the past, what hasn't, it's always good to get as much information as possible as you're going through and identifying which software segments or solutions you want to try to implement as an organization. This slide here is touching on the entire universe of customer interaction management and really what we focus on as an organization. So there's different audiences that are currently using different types <clears throat> of software solutions. So you have CRM, you have help desk, you have an e-commerce site. It's all scattered about. It's touching on different audiences. And we found based on feedback from our customers over the years that ultimately this creates a lot of work internally to keep everything up to date and it's not as streamlined as it should be. So we've developed the customer interaction management software platform, and this is going to cater to your customers. It's gonna to cater to your employees and not just for your sales reps. And it's also creating a cloud data hub, utilizing all of your business critical data in your ERP to drive these different applications so that you can properly service your customers in a more efficient way. Again, trying to compete and better serve your market within the industries that you're um, doing business in. So here you have an example of some major systems that are out there, and this is what we call the divide and cluster. So you got Salesforce automation, you have CRM applications, you got e-commerce platforms, you might have some customer self-service tools, 
uh, marketing automation and email software applications, point of sale, you got product information management tools, digital asset management tools, and content management systems that house all of your digital assets. But what we wanted to do is, is basically say, hey, let's take a step back and identify what these major systems are trying to accomplish. Once we did that, we realized what, what can we do now that we have it, an enterprise level sync with your ERP data, how can we then drive a web application that can solve all of these different types of needs within these markets compared to what these major systems are trying to accomplish. So the SIM software needs and pains. Typically we focus on the B2B space, which we feel is very underserved in the, the software um, industry. But some B2B must-haves, so you have, you, it's imperative as time goes on and your customers change and how they interact with their suppliers and their vendors, it is imperative for you to have some type of web application that can be supported on all devices with 100% accurate data to allow them to view their information and efficiently self-serve their entire interaction with you as a customer, viewing product information, viewing their specific price levels, being able to look at invoices, generating quotes, passing those quotes back and forth. So we want to streamline those entire processes centered around quote to cash for your business, ultimately driving more revenue and again, trying to keep your employee costs down so that ultimately the ROI you see from this application is what you were expecting. So are the solutions colliding or are we seeing just are we seeing them coexist? So, so the answer to this one is, is definitely much more complex than a yes or no, uh, but we definitely see a combination of the two. So ERP systems are very costly to change. So you're starting to see new ERP systems come into the market that try to solve some of these pains with different applications, uh, for instance, like a NetSuite. Um, but trying to replace your existing ERP, we use the analogy of open heart surgery while you're trying to run a marathon. If you have a completely healthy heart, it's very, very time intensive and very costly and can ultimately jeopardize the entire business organization if you want to replace that while you're trying to still conduct business and serve your customers. So this is typically the number one driver for most. They wanna to move to a cloud type platform and that's exactly what we've done but allowing you to keep your existing ERP systems. So the new software category emerging, SIM, is what we've created here. And the reason we have created customer interaction management software, or SEM, is because we saw a huge need with our customers, that they need one platform for both CRM and internal reps to utilize, along with an application that their customers can utilize to self-serve. So it covers all audiences and interactions. It covers all interaction area topics, um, which are the big gaps for B2B customer segments. It covers all sophistication levels of interactions, depending on what type of customer is doing business with you. It will also allow for collaboration and progression. And what we've noticed over the years, because we initially got started as a company in e-commerce, as we've started to expose CRM-like functionality in our applications, we've seen a much higher level of adoption because now you have internal reps that are required to use this application and send that information over to your customers. Ultimately, one, just getting that information in front of them, and two, seeing how easy it is for them to use that self-service mechanism and ultimately saying, hey, the next time I can just place my own order, I don't need a rep's intervention to make that happen. So here we wanna understand where the solution falls in the gradient. Which areas of this gradient do you need based on your requirements that we have identified in step one? So there are micro solutions, there are department or segment solutions that attack about 80% of the pain for a department. And some examples of that is marketing automation, Salesforce automation, CRM and HRMS. Those are specific to different areas within your organization, but not, <clears throat> not the organization as a whole. So enterprise-wide solutions, um, this is something that we wanna to touch on and be sure that we are creating an application that can touch your organization at an enterprise level and not just at different segments within your organization. So how will this fit into your business stack? Um, changes to your existing systems, is it an add-on? Are we gonna change your existing processes and you're gonna include additional training we need to resolve the master data conflicts that you're having. You have multiple places to add, edit, and, and uh, manipulate data. We wanna make sure that we're creating, not we don't wanna create duplicate processes, but we wanna create one process that's utilizing one system of record, uh, one business critical database, which would be your ERP, and make it much easier to identify what's going on in the organization, being able to identify what activities your internal reps are having to generate more business, and use that to then report on because if you can quantify it, you obviously can report on that, and then you can make better decisions moving forward with that data as an organization. 
So then part four, <clears throat> as we begin to wrap this up, you then want to make a decision. So does this make sense to proceed? And this is where you want to apply the five question tests that we use. Is the pain solved greater than the pain we're going to create for the solution? And we see this all the time in the software industry. We have some particular uh, team segment within an organization who thinks this is the greatest uh, solution out there, but they don't ultimately see the, the pains that that's going to create internally if, if we have to change internal processes. So we want to be sure to identify that again, the pain solved is greater than the pain we're creating with this software application. The second question here, does it fit into your business stack? And is it going to work well with your existing backend software, your backend data, and all that good stuff? The third question is, can you implement, given your current resource constraints, and we come up against this a lot with our customers, do they have the internal bandwidth to implement and successfully utilize the application that we're providing? The fourth question here, should, it, should you bet on the vendor as a market leader, or should you do your due diligence to make sure that the solution you're going after is ultimately solving that pain and creating less, or it's solving the pain and creating less pain internally? The last question we look at here, does it meet the money criteria? Is it valuable? Is it a good deal? Uh, that, that, those are the typical two big points that come up with any pragmatic buyer. We want to make sure it's, it's good value, and we want to make sure it's a good deal and a fair price and what the market bears. So the new story, the happy ending, ultimately, we want to give you an informed shopper utilizing all of our digital assets and our, our online applications that tap into your business critical data on the back end. And ultimately, if they are informed, they are much more likely to purchase and transact with you as a supplier or vendor. And then downstream from that, if they're a happy customer, you are making money and the customer is also making money. So it's, it's definitely a very valuable, valuable partnership. Ultimately, that's the, the presentation I have today, high level. Hopefully, I got the wheels turning for you um, uh, for today and thinking internally on business strategy. And digital transformation is a big concern in today's world, and we're more than happy to jump on calls, have demo, discovery, questionnaires, what have you. The last thing I always do in my presentations, this is my LinkedIn profile. I'm a big fan of LinkedIn. Much easier to manage my contacts there. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me or Bass. And we'll be sure to get you going, at least get you some information so you can start the discovery process.